Ever heard of biochar? Well, it's a pitch black powder that's very rich in carbon. Biochar is what's left over when biomass is used in a pyrolysis process for extracting renewable energy. It's not cheap, but according to tests done in tropical soils, it's a very powerful soil improver, resulting in better crop performance. The question is, is biochar such an amazing fertilizer and growth promoter in West European soils as well? Not really, according to extensive plot and field trials performed at the Institute for Agricultural and Fisheries Research, or ILVO, in Belgium. The most positive effect was observed during disease suppression testing. Three standardized plot trials were done, with strawberry, lettuce, and potato. In the lettuce and potato plot trials, the plants were grown in mineral field soil. The lettuce was infected with the pathogenic fungus Rhizoctonia solani, and the potatoes got a dose of potato cyst nematodes. The effect of adding biochar to the substrate in both of those trials showed only a limited effect on disease resistance. Only the strawberry trial showed a clear positive effect from adding biochar. The strawberry plants grew in a substrate based on the fairly acidic white peat. We inoculated with the gray rot mold Botrytis cinerea. In the pots with biochar added, the chemical, physical, and biological characteristics changed so much that the plants became remarkably more disease resistant, and they grew better. In other, better fertilized peat substrates, where lime and fertilizer had already been added, the positive effects of biochar were much less obvious, although the disease resistance still did improve. And now to the fields. Can adding biochar to the rich agricultural soils of Northwest Europe lead to better disease resistance, better crop performance, higher soil carbon content, and a better soil chemical and biological composition? The answer was clearly no, or at least not enough, according to the ILVO results from a long-term field trial. In various field crops, biochar addition was compared with adding a standard compost and a biochar compost mix. After one application of all three products, we could see a clear shift in the numbers. The soil became less acid. The carbon content rose. Diverse van onze percelen hebben eigenlijk een te laag koolstofgehalte, dus zijn we op zoek naar een product dat koolstof kan aanbrengen in de bodem. En de biochar, de compost en de compost gemengd met de biochar in dit project, die hadden eigenlijk allemaal een zeer hoog koolstofgehalte. En dan na drie jaar zagen we eigenlijk dat het koolstofgehalte effectief gestegen was. Ook de zuurtegraad van de bodem was verbeterd, maar Daarnaast zagen we eigenlijk ook dat de bodemkwaliteit op zich niet echt verbeterd was. Dus het, het bodemleven of de bodemvruchtbaarheid of de gewasopbrengst of de ziekteweerbaarheid, die waren niet veranderd door eenmalig die producten toe te passen. In contrast, another field trial where compost was added every year showed all kinds of positive changes. Not only did the carbon content rise and the acidity drop, the general soil quality improved. So did the soil biodiversity and the plants became more disease resistant too. Furthermore, Ilvo could show that the use of compost in addition to animal slurry did not present any risk for leaching of nitrogen or phosphorus over a five-year period. We thus discovered a good balance between carbon addition and the efficient use of nutrients. Compost appeared to be the motor for soil improvement. So how does biochar rate as a soil improver? The simple conclusion is that biochar is not a wonder product for Belgian soils. For soils like these with a low soil carbon content and high nutrient levels, repeated compost application is clearly the best strategy for improving soil quality.